Dr. Sever, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Can you tell me a little bit about your company, BioArchive? I'm really interested in the mission. Oh, uh, okay. Well, so, so first of all, it's not a company. So it's um, BioArchive is part of Cold Spring Harbor Lab. So it's... Um, uh, Initiative. Yeah, it's an initiative. Well, so Cold Spring Harbor is interesting. Cold Spring Harbor obviously has this big sort of many year history of being a sort of premier molecular biology genetics cancer research institute. But we also have this like big communication program. It's a huge powerhouse and a couple different things. Yeah, so we've been running um, like meetings for nearly 100 years. People have come to come Cold Spring Harbor and learn the latest molecular biology techniques. We've had lab manuals, we've had journals, textbooks. And so BioArchive is really just an extension of that. And it's a way to um, allow researchers to communicate their research as quickly as possible. So I'm, you know, what normally happens with a scientific peer review process is that you submit to a journal. Most of the time, you're rejected from that journal, <laughs> so you've already wasted some time. I think we've all time. been there. Yeah, we've all been there. Um, then, so you submit to another journal. Maybe they agree to peer review it. That will then typically take something in the order of 40 days. Then you'll get some response from the journal, which typically says you've got to do some more experiments. You go off and do the experiments, you submit again, it may be additional rounds of peer review, and the av on average, this will take you about eight months. And this is precious scientific time wasted. Exactly, exactly. It'll take you eight months, and it could take you up to two or three years. And of course, this is all time that could have been spent by other people working on that yeah. work. And this process hasn't changed in how many years? Oh, um, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's been going on for hundreds of right. years, really. That's since, you know, that's since the kind of like the Royal Society began to think about how you would communicate science. It's, right. But, but m what's happened more recently is that people feel that it's take, taken longer than it should have. Um, and as, as we said, that's, that's wasted research time. So what BioArchive does is says, let's, let's decouple the dissemination of the research from this later process of certification. So you know, you put your paper on BioArchive and in 48 hours, once, once we've checked that you're kind of like not insane, you know, and it's really, is a, it's actually a real paper, mm -hmm. then it goes online and people can look at it um, in, in your field, but with the kind of caveat that it's not been peer reviewed. Yeah. So it may not be right. So it has a kind of like, it essentially has a bio beware sticker on it. Okay. So it's like, you know, it's like, this is our latest research, read it, but you're gonna have to make up your own mind because we have not yet gone through the process of having it vetted. How is this different than like open access journals? Well, so, uh, so, well, so that's the other thing, it's all, all free. So in that respect, it's similar. Okay. Um, but, it's, but, but, but an open access journal is, is the, the thing about open access is once the, um, once the paper has been reviewed um, and it's published, it's free online. Um, but you still have that lag time. But you still have the lag time. So you can, you can read it, but you're still going to have to wait that average of eight months. Whereas with BioArchive, you have to only wait 24 to 48 hours. Do you have to be vetted by um, BioArchive before accessing this kind of pre-peer no. review? Can anyone do it? Could I do it? Yeah, anyone can do it. Anyone, anyone can um, uh, post for free. Anybody can read for free. All, all that happens is that we essentially have a, a peer group of, um, of scientists who look at all the papers that come through, and they basically say, you know, is it a paper? Is it science? Could it be dangerous? Those types of things. And it's, it's you know, most, um, uh, most people can tell within a couple of minutes if something is a real paper. So it's not you Wikipedia. Know. You can't, no one can just go on and post whatever, no, exactly. you know, half-cooked paper. No, exactly. Okay. So, so yeah, and so, the, and there are things that we reject. So somewhat peer-reviewed, just not maybe in the extensive well, process. I wouldn't, I, it's, I wouldn't call, yeah, we, I wouldn't call it peer, it's like, it's a screen. Okay. It's a screen to remove what currently is about sort of 10%, 15% of stuff that's basically, you know, nonsense or not, or isn't, isn't a paper. Sometimes we get things where somebody's like, you know, sort of taking something out of a textbook or it's, you know, it's not a, you know, there are venues for other things like that, but it's, and you know, we get a fair share of kind of like, you know, crazy ideas, you know, you, you see things which have the, you know, you only have to see the word like quantum consciousness and Darwin and wrong <laughs> and that, that goes in the in a same sentence, yeah. and, you know, and, and, and yet it's not appropriate for that. You know, I mean, the mission's really, you know, the rapid sharing of, you know, bona fide research. And what do you hope to accomplish with this? Well, um, I think the, 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 the speed is the main thing and that, you know, when, 
I think some, somebody yesterday was trying to do an estimate of all the research times. If you sum up the eight months for every paper, um, then that's an incredible amount of research time that is wasted. And so you, I mean, we've had great examples on, um, on bioarchive. So Daniel MacArthur uh, posted a paper on his um, EXACT consortium. And, you know, there, I think there were several months in between. And he pointed out that in those several months, there were literally hundreds and hundreds of scientists using the data and already building on the work that he'd done before the paper actually appeared formally in a journal. Does that threaten his chance of publication? Is there any no. disincentive to do this? No. So, um, no. So I think what's, what's, been, um, what's been graded, so this, this sort of thing has been going on in physics for 25 years. And, you know, all, all, the, all the journals that publish physics, computational science are happy with this. And, um, and that's largely true of the biology research journal. Some of them took a while getting to understand it. Um, but I think, you know, the, the fact that we're, that there's no peer review happening and that, that is still, you know, under their, you know, auspices means that I think people are reassured by that. And, you know, and it's, it's quite hard to argue against the idea of getting something out that's helping right. science fast, right. you know. So, so for the most part, it, 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 it doesn't. There are, some, there are some more, in the more clinical sphere, there are some concerns. And so that's where people are treading a bit more carefully. And I think, I think we have some ways to go in... Um, uh, convincing everybody it's the right thing to do there and the process might be slightly different because you know you don't want to posting clinical misinformation has yeah, the dangers consequences, that, the yeah. consequences are different from posting you know a cell biology paper that's wrong you know I mean p people work that out pretty pr pretty quickly and it's no not going to harm change the, how they treat a patient for example yeah, based yeah. on a cell biology paper. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's not going to suddenly mean that kind of thousands of people in, um, in California stop vaccinating their kids. God forbid. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, tell me briefly about your relationship with the Chan Zuckerberg Institute. Um, so uh, Chan Zuckerberg have this really ambitious mission to um, speed up science. You know, they have this bold goal of kind of being able to cure, manage all human disease in, in the next century. Um, and they, what they fe feel is that a key part of that objective is going to be accomplished by speeding up communication of science and scaling it. So, you know, that was interesting because that was a mission kind of like com completely aligned with BioArchive. So it was, it was we were really... We for each other. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was really great um, talking with them because there was a real uh, meeting, of, meeting of the minds. And, and so, you know, it was, you know, there was agreeing a common path forward was, was was very very simple and they you know they you know they're they're fantastic they have this goal they have you know they have financial resources behind them which will will allow us to scale you know hopefully to hundreds of thousands of papers per year um, they also have you know uh, the kind of the technological input they can provide with their connections is phenomenal and their engineers so you know it's 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 been a fantastic partnership and we really ha hope to go on to do sort of great things and, and, and really m make it a default behavior for all biological scientists that when they're thinking of distributing their research, when they're thinking of submitting to a journal, the first thing they do is go, okay, I'll just put it on bioarchive so, so everyone can read it, you know. And, then, and the other thing to mention actually that's important is in that window, you get um, feedback so that's what's what been really so nice. Other from other scientists. Yeah. So that's been a really nice aspect of it. It's seeing people say, oh, I put my paper on bioarchive. Maybe I couldn't decide what journal to submit it to. Maybe I wasn't quite sure how to go. And then suddenly, you know, I got some public commenting or somebody told me something on Twitter or I got a bunch of emails when people said, oh, have you thought of doing this? So we've actually seen some kind of nice examples where somebody has posted a paper on bioarchive then somebody's come along, another researcher's come along, commented on the paper, had some thoughts on it. Then when the authors formally published it in a journal, in the acknowledgement section, they thanked the person oh, how wonderful. For, the, for the comments from, the, from when they posted the It's like working on a Google Doc with your, you know, over a group project. Everyone's yeah, kind of adding yeah, to it. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't, so it's interesting. I don't know if yet that's result, resulted in anybody actually right. being made a co-author. But it might, you know, but it might happen. in theory, certainly, of course. Yeah. And so reducing some of the friction in getting yeah. papers um, and getting scientific information 
out there, yeah. as well as encouraging collaboration. I think it's a, such a wonderful idea. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure.